Hey guys, it's Scott from Horse Racing Daily. And with Flatline's victory in Pacific Class this past week, you know, people started talking about him, you know, mentioned him on one of the all-time greats and, you know, brought up the conversation. So in this video, we're going to talk about the top three horses of all time. This is going to be one where you can get 100 people and nobody's probably going to have the same top three. There's been plenty of good race horses over time. And it's tough to compare different errors and different times. Is, you know, I'm kind of seeing a lot of the newer horses come up, you know, like Gunrunner, Arrogate. You know, now hopefully Flatline will be mentioned when his career is done. You know, some of the people, you know, in their 50s, 60s, probably got to see like Secretariat, you know, Cigar, Zenyatta, some of them. So people from different times but have different horses that kind of touch their hearts. And so in the comment section, I really want to hear who your top three horses of all time are. And when I started doing this, one of the first things, you know, I tried to look at was, you know, the top earning getters of all time. And you can see like Eric at Top Stag, got Thunder Snow, uh, Gun Runner, who was very good. But I don't think that's an accurate representation of where to really start looking for, you know, the best racehorse. Are you know certainly good ones in like two cigar cracks number eleven. And keep in mind that you know horses in the seventies and eighties and nineties were not racing at the same level of purses that horses are racing nowadays. But that being said, horses that did race back then race a lot more than horses that race now. Like you know, horses now are pointed to seem like more three, four, five, you know, race campaigns, whereas horses back then were. You know, it'd be nothing to see them run seven, eight, nine times. So that being said, I, I think horses that are, you know, more current that have the higher earnings, I think that's representation of the purses getting bigger for some of the more prestigious races. So I'm not going to use that, you know, as a full indicator, even though one of my top horses, you know, that will base off of it a little bit. And that's going to bring me to number three. And that's going to be Cigar. And you know, just like I was, you know, talking about, you know, Cigar Race, you know, back in like the 80s, 90s, and it's just, you know, the person were a lot smaller back then. He made it all the way up to number 11. Like some of the other all-time greats, you know, as you talk about, are not even in that top list, but Cigar managed to do that. He was one that, you know, as he got older, got better. He wasn't really that great as a two-year-old. You know, as a three-year-old towards the end, he started doing it. It was this four-year-old and five-year-old campaign where, you know, it really started taking off, and you know, he was just winning grade one after grade one in his four-year-old campaign. I capped it off with a British Cup Classic win. He got the Jockey Gold Club win, the Woodward. And then started off good in his, you know, five-year-old campaign and ultimately lost in the British Cup Classic, got third. And, you know, then he went to retirement and, you know, he had a very good career, a lot of money made. And because of the fact when he raced and the, the fact that the purses were a lot smaller now than they are, then he could still make it all the way up to number 11. I just thought that was really impressive so for me i had to put him in at number three and you may disagree and that's fine and that's gonna bring me my number two horse and that's gonna be zenyatta and zenyatta makes my number two because all this horse did was just went all the way up to her very last race where she got beat by blame and that's probably one of the i think top five race horses of all time or, you know single races of all time where you know blame had to leave you know turn her for home and Zenyatta looked like she was coming at the very last minute. You know, she just couldn't get there. It just, it looked like she was going to win, but she didn't. And that was just a, a great moment for the sports. You know, a lot of people, you know, tune in and watch. You can see Mike Smith crying at the end of the race because he, you know, really wanted the win on Zenyatta. And, you know, that horse meant a lot to him. And it was, it's a very good horse. And look at all the first place finishes. And, you know, I had to use this all horse racing nation because I couldn't find it traditional past performance so this is the best I had to work with for this one but you know as you can see Zenyatta a lot of first place finishes and you know that horse whenever you know people start thinking about the Phillies this horse is definitely you know number one so I want to you know have to put this horse at number two and that's going to bring me to number one and that's going to be Secretariat and I put Secretariat at number one because when people start talking about who the best you know race horses are now you know, the, the one thing I always hear is this is the best racehorse since Secretary. You don't hear this is the best racehorse since Cigar. This is the best racehorse since Zenyatta. This is the best racehorse since American Pharaoh. You know, it's always Secretary. There. You don't hear the best racehorse since Seabiscuit. Like I said, it's always Secretary. So to me, that, that means Secretary has a special place in the, you know, hearts of, you know, everybody in the sport. And, you know, I wish I could have been alive to see Secretary run, you know, back in the 70s. And that'd have been cool if Secretary had won the triple crown, but to me that just had, had Secretary had to be number one just for the simple fact that that's the horse that all the other horses get compared to. And 
And I really think that's for a reason because that horse is really special back in the day. And, you know, just a horse that did such a special job and it still gets talked about. You know, it's like the Babe Ruth of baseball where people still, you know, compare players to Babe Ruth or, you know, Hank Aaron. So to me, that just leaves a special place in people's, you know, hearts and minds. And that's going to be my top three racehorses of all time. And 